this episode, we are going to see how to use Web Inspector that comes along with Google Chrome. I'm using version 21 of Google Chrome. In order to open up uh, the WebKit Inspector, you can just right click and you can say Inspect Element and that will open up the Inspector. The other way to open the Inspector is on Mac, you can hit Option Command I. This will open up the WebKit Inspector if you always want to open and you want to go to console, then you can do options command J and this will always take you to the console. Now that we know how to open the WebKit inspector, let's see how to do JavaScript debugging. So here we have something called sources tab. First, let's see what we have on the right hand side panel. Here we have workers which we are not going to discuss in this episode. After workers, we have event listener breakpoints. If we open this thing up, what this uh, allows us is, is to track any time an event is changing. Now let's see DOM manipulation. So let's say that the, as part of your JavaScript application, you are changing a DOM and you're not able to detect which JavaScript code is actually attaching this down. So what you can do is check this box and anytime any DOM is inserted, it will do a breakpoint. Other features that are available is uh, on mouse click, double click, mouse up, mouse down. If a JavaScript code is running something like set timer, set timeout, and you want to track uh, which JavaScript code is called causing that, you can uh, you can track that too. Uh, we have more uh, facilities like control, resize, scroll, zoom, focus. So here for the demo purpose, I will take the simplest one, which is click. The moment I let's say that I click here, edit. So you see, the moment I did the click, the, the process did not complete. Process paused because I set a breakpoint that whenever the click event happens, then set a breakpoint and it lands me right there. And here I can do all kinds of debugging. So this is a great way to do JavaScript debugging when you do not know why this DOM is getting deleted or why this DOM is getting inserted or why it is firing say a blur event or zoom event or reset event. So that's about event listener. Next one is XHR breakpoints. Here you can set a breakpoint anytime an AJAX request happens or you can be very specific and say that set a breakpoint anytime the Ajax request URL contains certain word. So in this case, I'm going to just say that anytime an Ajax request is made, then set the breakpoint. So here I'm going to click on uh, payment methods. This refreshes the page. So we did not see any breakpoint. Now let me click on authorize.net edit settings and let's just hit submit see we have a breakpoint because in this application anytime you are changing payment uh, settings it makes an ajax request and here we set a breakpoint for any ajax request the next one is dom breakpoints here we are going to click on this uh, outgoing arrow which uh, says show navigator when we click on it we get to see all the javascripts that are included in this page here i'm going to select load states javascript and i'm going to set a breakpoint over here so to set a breakpoint all you need to do is click and now there is a blue marker which indicates that 
a breakpoint has been set. On the right hand side panel, you can see that uh, a breakpoint has been set at line number 26. Now that I have set the breakpoint, if I change the country name from US to Canada, you can see that I have the breakpoint. And here I can look at the value of state by just hovering over it and that is showing me that this is Alberta and the code is AB. Or the other way to see it is by going to scope variables and here I can see local variables. And one of the local variables is state. If I expand this then I can say Alberta and AB. Next one, I can step over the next function call by clicking this and then now if I go and see the value of state has changed from British Columbia to BC. And I can do this but in some cases the value that I want to look at could be very deeply nested. To help us look at the values I want to look at, I can do something called watch expression. So here I'm going to click on the plus sign and then I'm going to just type test and see I have auto completion here so I will just go ahead and click state. And now I can expand state and as I move uh, to next function calls, the value of state will change and I can monitor it much more easily in watch expression compared to scope variables. Here at the top you see that um, there is a downward arrow and there is an upward arrow. So they work uh, very similar to any other debugging tool where if you click on downward arrow then it will take you inside the function and clicking on outward arrow will take you out of the function. This one is very useful in some cases, deactivate all breakpoints. Sometimes during the debugging process, I have so many breakpoints that uh, it becomes hard to manage uh, to get to the point where I want to get to and you can just click on it to deactivate all the breakpoints and then go. And this will go ahead and uh, complete the whole process. Coming to a particular point and hitting to add a breakpoint is useful. However, sometimes I already know that I need breakpoint at a particular uh, point in my JavaScript code. If you already know that you need breakpoint at a particular point, you can go to the code itself and you can type debugger. So here I am on that loadstates.js uh, javascript file and I am going to type debugger. Save the file, come to browser, refresh it and then change the country code. So now I can see the breakpoint at debugger. So this debugger is a very uh, good utility tool. Here I am at uh, api.jquery.com and if I go to sources tab and select jquery.min.js then, the, then I get to see the whole jquery file in minified uh, fashion which is really hard to read and this is where this pretty print tool comes into picture. If you click on it it will make that minified version a lot prettier. It still has one demerit that the variable names are still named A, B, C, D which makes it a little bit hard to read but still at least you get to see the JavaScript in a, in a prettier fashion. Next up we have this thing called don't pause an exception. So here by default the color is gray which means that don't pause an exception if you click once the color changes to blue which means that pause on all exceptions and if you click it once again the color changes to purple 
which means that pause on uncaught exceptions. To better understand this, uh, these three colors, let's start with gray, which is the default case. So let's go back to our JavaScript code. And here I'm going to type something which will cause an exception. For example, I will type here A. A is not defined anywhere, so it should fail. Let's try to refresh the page. And indeed, I got the exceptions. However, notice that when I'm in the sources page, and if I refresh the page, I have no visual indication that there is an error in this page. I had to go actively look for this error and then I see that yes, there is an error. So this is where the purple comes in picture because the purple is for all uncaught exception. So if I change it to purple, then it will catch uncaught exception. This exception which uh, I put in in my code, it is not being caught anywhere. It is not in a try catch block. So it will be treated as an uncaught exception. Now let me try to refresh this page. But notice I'm in the sources tab. So if I refresh this page, see, I'm getting a breakpoint at the code which is causing the exception. So this is an active feedback. I didn't have to go into console looking for it to see, oh, was there an exception or not? So this uh, purple mode is really useful. So that takes care of purple. What about blue? Blue is for all exceptions, where there it is a caught exception or uncaught exception. Let me show you. I'm going to refresh this page and I got a breakpoint on an exception which has which is in jQuery but if you look at, at the code carefully this has something to do with sizzle match selector it tries to find out if this browser has certain features or not and in order to do those feature detections it attempts to do something and handles the exception in a catch block as we can see here. If we are in, in blue mode, then every single time there is an exception, then you'll get a breakpoint. Now let's talk about elements tab. Here I can click on this search uh, icon and I can select an element. So I have selected this element and now I want to play with this element. So I want to have my console uh, window here. If you click on console here, then you are taken away from the elements tab. You want to see both of them at the same time. To get to that point, all you need to do is hit escape. When you hit escape, then console window comes up. And when you hit escape again, then console window will go away. So here I'm in my console window and I want to get to this element. Well, how do I get to this element? I can do something like dollar dot control group label. But sometimes it is very deeply nested and it, it becomes difficult to get to that point. For that, uh, Chrome has a good utility called dollar zero. Dollar zero refers to the last selected element and in order to get the jQuery fired version of this, I can do dollar zero. So now it is uh, available for all kinds of DOM manipulation. Not only that, the latest selected element is in dollar zero. If I go ahead and select something else, so now this is dollar zero, I can also do dollar one, which means the version previously selected from the current one and then you can do dollar two also. If you want to clear the console in terminal in Mac we do command K the same thing works in console too. I'm going to hit escape to get out of console. 
let's say that you are doing JavaScript work and the text is changing from first name to full name and you want to find out which code is doing it. So you select the first name, come over here and then you right click. You will see three options. Break on subtree mo modification, break on attribute modification and break on node removal. So if you select break on subtree modification, then anytime if there is any DOM manipulation, not only on this element, but any of the elements which is under its tree, then you will get to see a break. Similarly, you can set a break on attribute modification. So if someone is changing the size or changing the class name, Web Inspector will set a break for you. And of course, you can use break on node removal to detect the code which is removing the node. On the right hand side, you can see the CSS properties. Uh, most of the people are familiar with how it works. However, I want to point out one thing. Anytime you want to edit numeric property, all you need to do is hover over it and then just do up and down arrow and the font will change. This applies to any numeric value. Same goes for color. If you select the color and then just do up and down arrow and you can see the color changing. Now let's look at network tab. I'm going to refresh the page and this is the result I get. So, so at the beginning of the light color, the request was made and at the beginning of the solid color which me signifies that the first byte was arrived so in this case there is a late latency of 418 milliseconds the blue line signifies when the DOM content loaded event was fired which is equivalent to jQuery's DOM ready. So which means that in for this page, DOM ready was fired after 1.27 seconds. And red line signifies when the load event was fired. Uh, this means that all the images, all the iframes and everything was resolved and it was loaded. That's all for this episode. I'll see you next time.